As our usual practice in this church, we have the privilege of giving opportunity for uh, brethren to ask questions after the search the scriptures session. So if you are here today and you have any question to ask based on what we study today from, from our side the scriptures on caution against compromise, can you signify by raising up your hand so that we give you the privilege of asking your question? One, another person? Two, okay, can we come to the mic please? Let's come and use the um, Um, my question is uh, in one of the passages that we read in Romans 13, verse 13, it talks about clean and clean and clean and clean and And you know, here in this country and generally in the world, there's this strong move away from eating meat. And it's so strong that many people who are so passionate about vegetarian diabetes. Like those who are vegans and they are very passionate and some uh, I have a vegan from who said who told me he cannot marry somebody who is not vegan because he sees it as an ethical and moral issue about eating it. Mm-hmm. Why can I look so simple? In our going about our preaching to and so on, how do we handle it? I know when we think we have some people like such a person coming to Christ, how do we relate such things and how do we not wound their conscience? Because of something like so personal, a person takes it so strong. Okay. Okay, thank you. God bless you. Okay, brother. Okay, thank you. God bless you. Very uh, two important questions. I um, think I'll try and see how we can combine uh, both questions, and at the end, as usual, I will ask feedback from you if you understand or not. I'll just go back to our brother's question, the first one. Let's go back again to our text in 1 Corinthians chapter 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. I'll read from verse 27 of 1 Corinthians chapter 10. It says there, If any of them that believe not bid you to a feast, and ye be disposed to go, whatsoever is set before you, eat asking no question for conscience' sake. But if any say unto you, this is offered in sacrifice unto idols, eat not, for it's for his sake that showed it, and for the conscience' sake, for the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Our brother want to find out because it's our usual practice, uh, not only 
to uh, people of the other religion, but also to every other religion. We also teach that in our own. Because the reason being that, here the Bible makes it clear that if anything that is offered unto idols, the question is, those people of other religion, which God are they serving? Is it the God, you know, that's of, of the God we are serving or another God? And then you need to begin to ask yourself, the religion that teaches, and not just that religion, but some other religion, they don't believe in the atonement of Christ. They don't believe that Jesus is the beloved Son of God. And that's what we believe. And that's the foundation of our Christian faith. That Jesus is the Son of God. Not only he is the Son of God, but that he was born by Virgin Mary. Not only he was born by Virgin Mary, the incarnation of Christ. These are the basis of the Christian faith. And anything that contradicts that, the very foundation in which we base our faith upon, that is another religion. That is not the religion that is, you know, approved by God. Because he himself said, I am the way. He is the only way. There is no other way apart from Christ. And not only that, I am the door. And if any man will come to the Father, it must be through the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's why we always take a stand in our church year. He says there, if any comes to you, Take, for example, you went to a feast, and that feast, you know, that's why there are times we uh, don't just go anywhere and everywhere. It's not everything we are bidden to go that we go. We have the Spirit of God. We have that con- and that's why Paul the Apostle says there, for conscience sake, for conscience sake, you know already that whatever thing those people are offering is being offered unto idols. Because that's not the God we serve. And that's not the faith we believe. And that's why we always take our stand. Not just that religion. There's another religion too that they celebrate. You know, they have the feast of love. The feast, some also have the feast. And in that feast of love, they will begin to make food and distribute and also sweeties and all these things. But we as Christians, we take our stand because of what the Bible says there. We can't say we don't know. In the case of Paul the Apostle, when he was writing to the church at Corinth, some of these, he says, ask no question, but therefore we now, we know, we have done the research, we know all these things already. There is no other sacrifice except the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ. If somebody now is saying he's making a sacrifice and is coming to offer that sacrifice unto you, that contradicts the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ. Do you want to partake in things like that? No, not at all, because of what the Word of God tells us. It says there in 1 Corinthians chapter 8. 1 Corinthians chapter 8. I'll read from verse 10. But, verse 8, rather. But meat commended, 1 Corinthians chapter 8, from verse 8. But meat commended us not to go. For neither if we eat are we the better, neither if we eat not are we the worse. Look at that stem. For if any see thee which has knowledge, sit at the meat in the idol's temple, shall not the conscience of him that is weak be embodied to eat those things which are offered towards? To idols, to idols, and through thy knowledge are the weak brethren perish for whom Christ died. You know, some of us we may say, Oh, I have a big conscience, I have a, a big heart, and things like that. There are some things we also do, it's not just only to idols, there are some things we also do in, Christ, uh, in the Christian dome. Not because of what, uh, of not, of, not because of just you alone but because of others that are watching over your life, because of the weak ones, because of the faith of the young convert. Take, for example, now somebody
somebody that just got converted on from the other religion and he knows is coming from a religion that does not believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, a religion that believes in sacrifices. Now, if he begins to see that I have come to Christ now, I've given my life to the Lord Jesus Christ, and you begin to see that what I'm rejecting, that's what you that's supposed to be a leader, that you that's supposed to be a pastor, you are accepting. That's, you know, that's why Paul the Apostle is saying there that for the sake of the conscience of that weak brethren, you don't want to partake in things like that. Not only that, in Deuteronomy chapter 10, Deuteronomy chapter 10, the Lord wants the children of Israel before this time, in, in, the, in Deuteronomy chapter 10, I'll read from verse 14. Behold, the heavens and the, the heaven and the heaven of heavens is of the Lord thy God. The earth also with all that what? Therein what? Therein what? Therein what? Is. Everything is of the Lord. But then there are still restrictions. Do you understand? We can't do so because meat is of the Lord. This is of the Lord. It's the Lord that has made it meat for the belly, belly for the meat. So as a result of that, I have my liberty. I have my freedom to eat everything. No, not at all. Everything is of the Lord. But yet it says in verse 15, only the Lord had the delight in thy fathers to love them, and he choose their seed after them. Even, uh, even what? Even you above all the people as it is this day. In verse 16, circumcise therefore the foreskin of your heart, and be not what? Be not what? Be not stiff neck. Be not stiff neck. Not only that, in, if you open our uh, Bible again to that same Deuteronomy, you see where the Lord wants the children of Israel in verse eight, uh, chapter 18 of Deuteronomy. Chapter 18 of Deuteronomy. How the Lord warned them against compromise, against eating things sacrificed unto idols. In verse 9, from verse 9 of Deuteronomy chapter 18. From verse 9, it says there, When thou art come into the land, which thy God giveth thee, sh- thou shalt not do what? Learn to do. Learn to do after the abominations of those nations. Remember, we read in chapter where now? Chapter where? We read in chapter, the previous chapter, chapter 10. It says, the earth is of the Lord. But now the Lord is not showing them that now you are going into, even though the earth is of the Lord. But when you now come into that land, you must not learn to do after the abominations. All those sacrifices are the abominations of the land, which we as Christians, we don't partake in. We don't partake in. We don't partake in. That's why the Lord, there is still restriction. The Lord has made all things, but yet the Lord still told the children of Israel, there are still restrictions in the land. The same thing in the Christian dome. Yes, we've given, we walk by faith. Paul the apostles say, if anything said before you, eat. For thy con- don't ask questions. But there are some, you don't need to ask questions. It's clear. It's clear. It's clear already that this is sacrifice unto idols. Some of these practices, it's clear that we as Christians, we are not to partake in all those sacrifices. We are not to partake. Don't say, well, because uh, the Bible says we should not ask questions, but you have the knowledge already. You have the understanding already. You know that this thing they are doing contradicts the very foundation of the Christian faith. And as a result of that, we are not to partake in it because the Lord told the children of Israel, thou shalt not learn to do after the abomination of those nations. There shall not be found among you any that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, or that useth divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch, or a shaman. You see there, and in verse 12, for all these that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord thy God does drive them out 
from before thee. That's why we as Christians, we don't partake in all those abominations, in all those festivals. It's not just sacrifices, no. the festivals of the world, the festivals of even our own land here, of even the Western world. So where in the Western world, they are there still sac- yes, there are still sac- sacrifices. I remember when our children were growing up, we taught them that even in school, there are some things we don't do as a result of our Christian faith. We told them that there are some things we don't partake in, and they stood their ground. I remember when my, uh, when I just want to use this example, my son was going up there, very, you know, in his early days, in the old school, they were all praying in the name of Mary, but my son refused to pray. He stood his ground, and as a result of that, you know, they wrote later and everything, and we say, well, that's our belief, that's our, that's what we've taught them, and he stood his ground. The same thing, we need to teach our own children. You know the fruit, pass the knowledge over to them. And the Lord will help us as well in Jesus' name. I remember the other time too, they said they want to go to a temple and they, as a result of uh, their education that they need to go to this temple of Udus and things like that, that they need, they need permission. And we told her, daughter was saying, well, you know what we believe. Yeah, he said that, I know. And then, that she, she has already opted out that she cannot go into that. This, that's what we've taught, and that's what we need to teach our children. We need to stand on the word of God. And the Lord himself will help us to stand in Jesus' name. It's not just eating sacrifices. The practices of the world, the, abom- the Halloween festival. Christians, we don't partake in Halloween. We don't say, oh, well, there is a time we go knocking on people. You, you now give, uh, give your children the sweet and say, knock on the door and begin to distribute it. We don't do that because these are the abominations of the land. There are some things we don't allow in our home. Even our children, they know that there are some channels they cannot even watch as Christians because these are the things we've taught them and the same thing we need to take our stand. And the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. My brother, the that seems to answer our question. Our sister asks the question and say, How about for somebody that has a particular belief and say, Well, this is my own belief, this is my own, uh, what I believe, what I just felt because as a result of that, I don't eat meat. How do we undo such a situation? Let's go back again to our text in, non, in I mean, where our sister was quoting from Romans chapter 14. Romans chapter 14. Verse 1, He that is weak in the faith, receive ye, but not to what? Not to what? Read it. Are you not there? Romans chapter 14, verse where? Verse where? 1. Now, can we read it? 1, 2, go together, everybody. In? Not to doubtful disputations. Somebody comes and he has accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as his personal Lord and Savior. And that's it. As he has expressed his faith, that's the common thing that bands us together. Do you understand? It's the blood of Christ that bands us together. But then we are still women. We still have our own women differences. We still have our own women, uh, woman preferences. Now, if it comes and then uh, you're having your, uh, what do you call it now, barbecue, and then as you're having the barbecue, and uh, I remember, I know our wonderful brothers and uh, sisters, the way they do the dish and everything, and, if, and we set all the tan drink and all this, and oh, sorry, I don't take, um, I don't take um, uh, can drink. Uh, water will be okay by me. The Bible says, receive him, not with the word doubtful disputation. You receive him. That's his own preference. If you say, oh, well, for me, I don't eat meat, and uh, at times now I need to eat, uh, I eat too much of, um, I, um, I, because of, uh, I take fish and things like that. Husband and wife, too, there are times we need to also consider one another. If your wife now comes to you now and says, oh, dear, you know we are going through the, and uh, we need to change our diet. You say, ah, what, do you, what are you talking about? I believe God, as our Father in the Lord told us yesterday at the workers' meeting, even as it has, to, it has a what? 
as he has told me, nothing will happen to me. My brother, your wife is trying to keep you heavy. She's trying to keep you heavy. You know, when you are, there are some things you think when you are small, that now, some of those things, you cannot consume those things again. Some of us, we still live our life as if we are children. We are not children. You know, we see parents now struggling chocolate even with their children. No, those things are forbidden. You now, you know, all the sugar content in your own body now is more than what those children have. You need to manage that now for your own, for the sake of your head. You know, that's what the Bible says. The in that is we. He has his own preference. We see. We need to receive one another because he now comes to the faith and say, "Well, for me, I don't eat meat, and that's what I." believe and I stand by that, what do you do? That's not a doctrine, but for the sake of fellowship, we accept one another, we receive one another, and we honor one another. And the Lord himself will help us in Jesus' name. The example of Peter, I know we all know that because of our time, we will not be able to go into that. In Acts, in Act, when the Lord asked Peter to go, in Acts chapter 10, go to the house of Colinius, and the Lord showed him the revelation and said, eat. He said, no, I don't eat anything that is only. You know, no, Peter, eat. And the Lord told him, what God has cleansed, thou will not call unclean. Eat. You know, that's for the sake of the ministry. And we are not Peter. Do you understand? So if somebody comes to the faith and he still comes with his own personal belief, the Bible says we should do what? Receive him not with doubtful disputation. You don't say because of his own preference that you want to force them to have that uh, today everybody must eat me. There are some people that don't eat it and we just accept it like that. You don't know their head freezing. There are some people that don't, they come to your house and you say, please, can I have them? Um, and you are trying to give them um, uh, sugar content. They say, sorry, please, can you just give me ordinary water? Say, so, uh, you don't love me. No, he still loves you. He has offered to take the water. You don't begin to judge and say, ah, you know, you must. No, we don't go into this petition with, to me people to have our own preference. That's why we prefer, the Bible says in honor, do what? Prefer one another. Does that seem to answer your question, my sister? And I pray the Lord himself will give us more understanding in Jesus. In the summary of everything we've learned today, we'll go back again to our text in 1 Corinthians chapter 10. 1 Corinthians, that's the summary verse of everything we do in life. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31, Whether therefore ye eat or drink, or whatsoever ye do, what did the Bible say? Do all, all, everything. People set meat before you. They set drink before you. They set offering before you. Do all, you ask yourself, with this glorify God. If I take this thing now, does it honor God? If I take this thing from a religion that, you know, is contra- you know, that is against the incarnation of Christ, that is against the very foundation of my Christian faith, does that honor God? If I take this thing now that, is as- that has link to, wiz- to wizards and to, uh, you know, to, uh, to, you know, occultic practices. Does that honor God? That's the thing. You see, that's why it says, do all things. All things you do in life. Either you eat or you drink. Or wherever you go, do all to the glory of God. And I pray the Lord will give us more understanding in Jesus' name. Let's rise up as we go to the Lord in prayers. We want to commit ourselves to the hands of the Lord. That the Lord himself will help us. We've learned today, danger, we've been cautioned against compromise. We are not to compromise, my brother. Don't com- compromise the faith. Hold on to the Lord. Ask the Lord that the Lord himself will help you to stand. To stand for him. To stand on the basis of the truth. Anything that will not honor God. That will not bring glory to the name of the Lord. You don't want to do it. You want to ask the Lord that the Lord himself will help you, you will honor the Lord. Everything you do, you do all things to the glory of God. Your conduct, your behavior, you do all things to the glory of God. Tell the Lord that the Lord himself will help you tonight, today, that everything you do in life, everything will be to the glory of God, my brother. 
everything will be to the glory of God, my sister. Talk to the Lord, that the Lord himself will help you. Do all things to the glory of God. And we don't allow because of somebody's preferences. Now we begin to we begin to bring division, confusion in the church of the living God. No, we accept one another. As long as that thing does not contradict the truth of the Bible. A brother that does not take minerals. That, there's no doctrine that everybody must take minerals when they visit you at home. Or take sugary content when they visit you at home. There's no Bible that says everybody must eat meat or eat fish when they visit you at home. Or you don't be, we don't allow anything that will make for the, you know, differences in honor preferring one another. We prefer one another. We will learn to interact with one another. Accept that brother's weakness. Accept that sister's weakness. And we stay with one another. Let's pray that the Lord himself will help us. By his grace and by his power. We will live for him. That everything we do will be to the glory of the Lord.